I know what it's like to be stepped on. So uh, I know what it's like also to, to see some black hero do well, you know, in the face of adversity. My goal was to perform at the absolute best of my ability for that moment in time. I'm an Aborigine and I'm proud of it. It's part of my motivation. Stereotypes are meant to be broken. Three-time Grand Slam champion, social activist, leader. Arthur Ashe was a trailblazer ahead of his time. A man of steely determination who did just as much to change the world off the court as he did to change the sport on it. Arthur Ashe is by far and away the greatest ambassador we've ever had. A very special athlete to anyone who ever competed against him, played doubles with him or played under him. Arthur was born in 1943 in Virginia in the American South. He learned to play tennis on the segregated public courts where his dad worked as a caretaker. Now, despite the prejudice and barriers put in his way, Arthur's skill and resilience shone through. By his early 20s, Arthur was winning national titles. He'd become the first black man selected for the US Davis Cup team and his years of hard work would pay off when he became the US Open champ in 1968. The final was played in an angry, divided world. Martin Luther King had been assassinated shortly before and US cities burned. The fight for racial justice continued, but calls for change were met with violent aggression, while protests against the Vietnam War brought angry confrontations between police and young people across the globe. With all that was going on at the time, tennis seemed like a minor distraction. But icily determined, Arthur made a big point on his big day. The final was played at the Forest Hill Stadium in suburban New York. 30, the crowd in the arena saw a different kind of champion that day. Ash faced off against Homoko of the Netherlands and he quickly settled into his servant volley rhythm. The match swung first one way and then the other. It was a tough, tight five setter with both men giving everything. Oka showed his great shot play, but Ash held his form to come through in the final set. And he's done it! He was the first black man to lift the US Open trophy. The symbolism of somebody who looked like Arthur holding that great silver cup beamed around the world really was a big thing for tennis in the 1960s. The glory didn't stop there. Ash became one of the most popular and successful players of his generation. He went on to claim the Australian Open crown two years after his US Open win. He became the Wimbledon champ in 1975, upsetting his great rival Jimmy Connors in the final. And he celebrated his historic victory at the White House, alongside women's champ Billie Jean King. A graceful player on the court and a gracious man off it, Ash won fans all over the world. He had a presence and style that couldn't be taught or bought. No matter how you encountered Arthur, he demanded and commanded respect. Maybe that's because he was simply someone who let his racket do the talking on the court and whose actions off the court spoke volumes about what a fully realized human being he could be. As well as a great player, Ash also took responsibility as a great leader in the game. He was a firm advocate of players' rights. Along with his friend Stan Smith, Arthur was instrumental in the ATP's earliest years, becoming its president. A heart attack forced Ash to retire at 36, but even that didn't slow him down. He won two Davis Cups as US team captain, becoming a friend and mentor to John McEnroe along the way. Away from tennis, Arthur showed his true beliefs as a social justice activist, working to help disadvantaged communities. He was even arrested a couple of times whilst demonstrating against apartheid South Africa and US immigration policies. During heart surgery in the 1980s, Ash contracted HIV from a tainted blood transfusion. Still, he remained a trailblazer to the end. 
After years of keeping his condition private to protect his young daughter, Ash and his wife went public with his condition in 1992. He set up foundations and charities to help raise awareness and fund research, and he spoke openly about his reality, hoping to change hearts and minds which were often closed to those living with HIV AIDS at the time. In February 1993, Ash passed away from the condition, aged just 49. In 1997, the Arthur Ashe Stadium opened in New York. The biggest tennis arena in the world and the home of the US Open. It's a fitting tribute to a man who truly changed his sport. And it's the perfect stage for the greats who have been inspired to follow in his footsteps. You don't want to look back. Uh, I always look forward to the rest of today and tomorrow. Uh, what's in the past is past and there's water under the dam and you learn from your mistakes and you must go from there. As Ash looked forward to that US Open final in 1968, his words sound like a timeless manifesto for happiness. They speak to the quiet inner strength of a true trailblazer. Arthur Ashe was a great champion on and off the court. <laughs>